Good morning and welcome to Ask the Expert. I'm Joe Taylor. This morning, another in the ongoing series of programs presented by the Northwest Regional Key Program for Quality Early Learning. The program, through the Northwest Institute of Research, oversees a grant from the Office of Child Development and Early Learning at the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services and the Department of Education. The goal of the program is to improve the outcomes for young children as they prepare for school. John Poza from the Pennsylvania Key is the host of the program and is with us throughout the series. Good morning, John. I guess we have uh, two ladies on the line this morning, right? Yes, good morning, Joe. This morning we have Kelly Davis and Lisa Schwartz from the Titusville Regional Literacy Council in Crawford County. And they're going to be talking about their Community Innovation Zone project there, um, which is pretty much about establishing a family resource center in the Titusville area, which ensures that early childhood and family literacy services are available to all children and their parents in the Titusville area. So welcome to the program, Kelly and Lisa. Thank you. Thanks. Well, first of all, uh, I want to, you know, uh, try to explain to our listeners how the the project came about in terms of the, the Community Innovation Zone grant um, to, to get this program off the ground. So either one of you, Kelly, if you want to speak first, that would be fine. Okay. Well, we work for a relatively new organization in Titusville, Titusville Regional Literacy Council. And the opportunity arose to apply for funding through this Community Innovation Zone grant, and it came through Race to the Top funding. So one of our partners found that opportunity, and we applied. So we were lucky enough to be one of the recipients of that, and that's how it started. And, you know, the Family Resource Center is actually co-located in the Titusville School District's Early Learning Center, and, you know, of course, the school district is one of your partners in the project, project as well as uh, the United Way in Titusville, as well as the, um, the YMCA. So, Absolutely. And, and explain about how that, how that joint um, partnership is really effective in, in the type of work that you're doing. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know where to start, but we... We're Titusville Regional Literacy Council, and we offer adult literacy, family literacy, GED, high school diploma services. With the CIZ project, the Community Innovation Zone project, we have compiled um, all the early childhood services in the area. So when we're, you said that we're located in the Early Childhood Learning Center, which houses all of the K-4, K-5 uh, classes in the school district. So if the principal here or any of the staff meets a parent who needs any other kinds of services, they can refer them right downstairs because we're right here. Right. Um, it's just an, it's an amazing, amazing collaboration. Right. And United Way, they help with everything in the community. They were instrumental in getting our organization up and running. We actually started as a program of the United Way before we came our own nonprofit. So, um, I'm interested in. The y the, I'm sorry. Go I'm sorry. Go on. Well, I was going to say the YM. Lisa can tell you more about the program that we collaborate with, but I mean they're one of our early childhood programs or services. So Lisa can tell you more about that. Um, the YM has a school readiness program in place for three-year-olds in the community. It's called um, Tiny Footsteps. So it's, it's, it's school readiness and it's combination with child care as well. So they go all day and they get components um, to help them get ready for school, essentially, and also um, if, you know, parents are working, they can drop their kids off there as well for child care. So it's a great, a great program, and we're really fortunate in our community to have a lot of great programs like that and have them be partners with us. I'm interested in the role that the uh, Titusville United Way plays in, in the project. Is the project funded by the United Way uh, as if it were another participating member agency? Um, the CIZ project itself or, 
or yeah. our literacy program. Your literacy uh, program, yeah. Um, we do get funding through Titusville United Way, absolutely. Uh, we started as a program under Titusville United Way because what happened was the former literacy provider in the area closed family literacy in Titusville. Family literacy was a big need. There are parents out there who need literacy services, who need parenting help. Um, they just need services. So that didn't make the school district happy, really, and they got together with United Way to come up with a way that they could bring family literacy back to Titusville. And that's how we originally started, was um, we started as a small program. I was hired to work 20 hours a week just to get family literacy up and running. But in less than a year, we became a full service agency offering the other things as well, adult literacy, GED, and we partnered with Titusville area, Pencrest, and Forest area school districts, three different school districts, to offer the GED diploma program. So, yeah, United Way was totally instrumental in our beginning, and um, we do get funding through them. Is this a, a relationship that you think could be replicated in other United Ways in other areas, including here in Dubois? I mean, I think there's that possibility of it happening. I, I don't know your people that work for United Way there, but I know in Titusville they sure take care of their own. So, yeah, I'm sure it, it certainly could be. And of course, you know, another part of the, the project is you have a, um, a family group that meets, um, I think it's monthly, is it, or maybe bi-monthly, uh, where it's basically a parent leadership type of council, and they come in and, and they, they also, um, uh, the parents can bring their children, and there are um, activities and there are plans basically that the parents basically take empowerment in in their in the project to um, discuss some of their issues, some of the, the needs that they have amongst um, the group. Um, that 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 sounds like it's been a a, a a a big part of the CIZ project, hasn't it? Absolutely. Um, we actually are fortunate. We hold bi-monthly meetings for both parents and guardians, and for. Um, leadership, early childhood service leadership representatives in the area. Um, we're really fortunate to be able to do that. We just, um, this week, we just had our parent meeting, and then last week, we just had our leadership meeting. Um, and it's just like, just exactly like you said, it's a great chance for parents to come in, voice their concerns about their child's education, learn something new along the way, network with other parents. We do provide child care. We actually have a great collaboration with um, the teacher um, at the Titusville High School who teaches child development classes, and she always sends over some of her students who have their clearances and who are obviously wanting to go into the field of education. Um, and they always do an awesome job. We're really, really fortunate. Um, our meeting on Tuesday was all about ways to beat cabin fever, both for adults and parents and for kiddos, and just things that you could do together that were cheap, easy, fun, and kind of just you know kept the ball rolling and were educational. Um, and our leadership council meeting last week, which was very, they're always very well attended, um, we went over kindergarten entry inventory data, and everyone was really, um, there's just a really nice roundtable discussion and just two great components of the program. Yeah, and I can't, I can't express enough the, the relationship that the program has uh, with the school district and the fact oh, that they're you're, awesome. yeah, they're, they're, they're so awesome. And, and the fact that they're, they're, you're, you're both self-contained in the same building where yes. actually kindergarten uh, takes place and um, in the same building. And um, I mean, what a, it's just a tremendous setting for that transitional piece for um, preschoolers and, and the exposure and, and the exposure and the parents also becoming more familiar uh, with the school district so that um, there aren't a lot of surprises necessarily when you know, a parent has their child start kindergarten. But exactly. the other thing I wanted to ask you is that your parent leadership council meetings, um, just to make it clear, um, they, they don't uh, necessarily have to, even if a parent is in need of, of uh, some, some, whether it's a GED uh, assistance or whether it's uh, literacy, um, you know, assistance themselves, 
it's not just you know for those parents it's it's more uh, also to help the parent in in working with their child correct absolutely it's for anybody anybody right um, anybody any grandparents anybody who needs who wants or who just wants to expand their horizons it's anybody in the community prenatal all the way up so I, yeah I just like to say the the parent council meeting and the literacy services that we offer are just two totally separate things right now being housed in the school district um, it's just kind of it works kind of like a well-oiled machine but the part that we were missing was what we were able to do with this CIZ project so bringing the parents in to have a voice in their children's education, we might meet a parent there who needs GED services or literacy services, and then we're right here. They just kind of get to know us. I had a question. Is the, is the literacy program available to children? Any child within the Titusville School District, is that for anyone geographically within the boundaries, or is it for kids who are actually going to pu Titusville Public Schools? The literacy program itself, um, the only part of it that serves children is the family literacy part. So it's any parent who wants to come here for literacy services and bring their children with them, um, and they don't have to be within the Titusville Area School District. As long as they can get here, then they can bring their children. And we serve mostly children eight and under. We have a child care provider, educator, that works with us while the parent is studying for a GED or learning to read better or sharpening some soft skill, writing a resume, something. Then the child care provider is working with the child to get them more um, school ready so that the transition can happen. And of course, um, as with any project, uh, I always like to hear about success stories and testimonials. And, you know, I've had other um, spokespeople for the CIZ projects across the state uh, on the program. And Lisa, I wanted to ask you because I know you work directly with um, and uh, with the parents, uh, especially from the early childhood perspective. Can you share any stories, uh, 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 some real um, testimonials or successes that you've um, that you are aware of and that the parents have shared with you? Um, yes. Um, actually, my Coworker Chelsea and I, we try to do, we're, we're trying to expand um, our presence on social media. Um, and we just, with our meeting the other day, we just posted um, picture. We always have giveaways, of course. Right. You know, like to post pictures from the meeting and give a little synopsis of what's going on. But we found um, that that connects with a lot more people, maybe people who couldn't physically come to the meeting. And actually, um, as soon as we put the picture up the other day, um, one of the parents that came wrote in immediately and said, I just want to thank you so much. You know, it was great to have a discussion because we had a nice roundtable discussion about um, different activities that each of us have tried with, with our children um, and just for the opportunity to come. And also she um, expressed gratitude for, she won one of the giveaways and she expressed gratitude for that and um, said how much her children really enjoyed it and that she was going to enjoy playing that with her children, and she specifically said because sometimes, um, you know, I, for, she, didn't, she didn't have the money to go out and buy that herself. Um, so it was just really nice, and we get feedback like that all the time, and just, you know, thank you for this, and oh, well, that's a good idea. And not only that, but um, like you had said before, having a chance to come to the school, talk with people, you know, representatives from the school, and talk with other parents. It's just nice to really just make that full circle connection and that we can help facilitate that and then hear how wonderful, you know, how much they appreciate it. Right. And that's one of the key things, too, about families participating and not being bashful about uh, coming to um, and participate is that, you know, once they if they have a friend or they know another family that experienced it and they know them well and they they're encouraging them to come. And then once they go through it, they they're, they're more at ease and right. um, they just feel that they're part and they're all they're all there for the same reasons. And exactly. and, and that's part of that's part of the the um, 
uh, what makes it so successful is that getting the parents to come in the first place and once they do and they see some of their other friends and other families that they know and just being um, put at ease, uh, that, that is so much of it. Right. Yeah. Yes, you're exactly right. And also with the Leadership Council, um, and, you know, we're very, very parent-focused, but I tell you with our bi-monthly Leadership Councils, we have representatives come um, from all of the different early childhood services in the area that serve birth to five. Um, it's they just love being able to network with each other and network with representatives from the school again um, and just, you know, share stories and share positive feedback and learn something new, too, all at the same time because, we're you know, they're all doing the same. They all have the same goals and they all love children. They're just all kind of out on their own. Right. So having this opportunity for them to come together and serve as a platform, a coordination platform, has been excellent. I, I was wondering, how are you uh, reaching out, marketing, if you will, to uh, maybe parents of kids who uh, go to individual babysitters or relatives to inform them of uh, all that you have to offer, specifically the literacy program and, and uh, other services? Um, I'll say that social media and just word of mouth have kind of been our top two, at least for, for from the CIZ standpoint. Um, and again, it does take time to get established and We've been here about a year now, so um, we're still continuing to try to find anyone that we can. We also do um, paper flyers, and um, I deliver them out to various uh, daycare providers, family service providers that I know, different community agencies, um, you know, forming relationships with them and just letting them know when our next meetings are. And, um, again, the support from them to get the word out has been wonderful. Um, so just we continue to just try new ways. We continue to try to be innovative with that um, for the CIZ anyway. Now, and I'd just like to add that's for the CIZ part. For the literacy part, um, we have posters up around town. We have trifolds every place we can think to put them out. We have an ad at the movie in both Cranberry and Meadville. It's a 30-second ad that we put together, and that advertises the whole thing, the, the literacy part, the GED high school part, and the CIZ part as well. Which is great. And I think, I think the, the collaborative effort that, that you've done there has just been tremendous. And it really could serve as a, as a model for other communities that um, would be interested in, in, in doing the same thing. And, I, and I'm going to give you guys a little plug for, for folks who want more information if you don't mind, um, or, or have any questions, they can call the Regional Literacy Council at 814-827-0543. That's the local number uh, in the Titusville area. Or uh, folks from outside the Titusville area can call at 877-389-6874. That's 877-389-6874. And of course, um, someone will be able to uh, help you, and um, you know, with more information, and possibly your family and your child can participate uh, in the programs. Um, you know, the the Tiny Footsteps uh, Child Care Program at the Y is certainly uh, instrumental too, and they are a major partner as well as Twin Creeks Head Start. Um, tell us a little bit about the relationship you have with those folks. Um, well, we're fortunate. Tiny Footsteps um, and um, Head Start Pre-K Counts um, have both been instrumental in just getting the whole program started and also just um, helping spread the word, for what you will, um, just about all the services that are offered, both through CIZ and Family Literacy. Um, Tiny Footsteps, with our Family Resource Center, we have a bunch of interactive literacy activities um, and STEM activities, and I actually go out... Um, every couple weeks and switch bags out and get feedback from the teachers there just about, you know, how they use the materials. We have, we, we're very fortunate we were able to um, provide a lot of really nice activities um, that some child cares and early childhood services maybe don't have um, the means to provide for lack of funding there too. Right. Um, so it's just, it's been really nice just to form relationships and continue to form relationships and collaborate together just about the future um, ideas, not just for activities, but just for, you know, the CIZ in general, different goals and 
you know, what the programs see on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, it's all about collaboration and relationships and, you know, taking, you know, their, you know, what they have to say as we move forward because the collaboration is what makes this whole program successful. So. Right. And I'm assuming that, that you, you, have, you have parents of children that um, are in Tiny Footsteps or at Head Start that, that are also participating um, in, yes. the, in the uh, Parent Leadership uh, Council, correct? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That was, that's kind of like uh, what, what you would expect to happen with, you know, when you build those partnerships. Um, well, I can't say enough for, for the, for the uh, success that you've, you've had in, in the program. And, of course, you know, one of the, the main things that, that is the cornerstone of, the, of any kind of literacy project is the importance of reading to children. Um, and sometimes that can be a challenge for a, a parent that themselves um, may have um, need some assistance in literacy. So um, give us some, some tips on uh, how parents can work with their child at home, basically, um, and, and some of the tips that they learn from attending uh, the meetings there. Um, one of the main things that I always say is it doesn't matter, you know, if you have a book in your hand and a young child, it doesn't matter so much what the words in the book say. You can make up your own story and track the words with your finger, and that child is just going to be so focused on what you're saying and the story that you're telling that they're still going to get that, you know, those language and literacy skills. Right. Um, so, I, you know, it's important that parents, it's, it shouldn't be intimidating and you should just tweak it and make it your own. If you And it doesn't have to be a children's book. You can pick up a comic book or a magazine or the newspaper, or, you know, and just use the pictures. And also just talking to your child. Um, well, and, for example, from a personal standpoint, I'm, I'm 39 weeks pregnant, and I talk to my baby every single day and, you know, That's use great. picture stories with her. You know, and it, it starts from there. And it's just your voice and the time that you take, and that that's setting the stage right there. Um, and obviously, you, you know, if you want to further your skills, the literacy program can definitely help you do that. But it's, it's all about your relationship with your kiddo and the bonding. That sets the stage for future things. So. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I just want to thank you guys really so much for, for being on the program. Um, just, just to let everyone know, when we talk about CIZ, it's Community Innovation Zones, and I've had a number of others um, on the program in the past, and these are these are entities that receive this grant because they are doing something that's considered innovative, and maybe different, uh, in their communities that is having a success successful outcome with children, and um, these are projects that you know we hope can be replicated and be used as an example in other communities. So that's really the whole purpose uh, behind the CIZ. So. Um, Kelly and Lisa, I want to thank you so much for being on the program. I wish you much thank success. You. I know we'll be in touch uh, uh, very soon in the future, and uh, um, we hope you come back again. Thank you, thank so you very much. much for the opportunity. Thank you. And that's our program for today. We'll be back in two weeks at this same time. In the meantime, you can go online to learn more at papromiseforchildren.com. For John Posa and the Northwest Regional Key Program for Quality Early Learning, I'm Joe Taylor. Thank you for listening and have a great day.